let's look at the special case of unequal variances or a situation where we're not willing to assume equal variances for a t-test. So again, we're working with the percentage of antibiotic resistant MRSA infections reported by state and our regions data. Let's begin by subsetting our regions. So region analyze distribution and we'll put region in the Y column and press OK. What we want to do is look at only the northeast and western states. So what we'll do is click on south, hold the shift key and click on midwest and you can see the corresponding rows in the data set have been selected. So then I'll go to the rows menu and exclude. That will limit my data to simply the northeastern and western states. So not the western location, but the northeastern and western states in our four regions. Now I'll do analyze, fit y by x. We will now put region as x and 2011 as our response. And we get our ANOVA table here, our ANOVA figure here. And we'll go ahead and ask for the normal quantile plot. And in this situation, we're going to go ahead and assume normality. We're going to rely on the fact that we know that 2011 or percentage resistance are normally distributed. And we'll go ahead and assume normality, but talk solely about the standard deviations here. We can see that these lines, the blue line here and the red line here, cross. They're wider apart on the lower end and wider apart on the upper end, but they cross in the middle. This is an indication in the normal quantile plot that you have unequal standard deviations. Non-parallel lines or significantly non-parallel lines will indicate unequal standard deviation. You should also be concerned with unequal standard deviation when you have unequal group size. So let's take a look at our means and standard deviations. We can see that our group size is equal, albeit small, but that's a separate conversation. Again, we're assuming normality based on the underlying variable, but what we can see here is that one of our standard deviations is nearly three times as large as our other standard deviation. So we have a situation here where we have 13.4 versus 4.3. And so our standard deviations here may not be equal. We can ask JUMP to compare our variances. JUMP will then give us five tests to look at for unequal variance. The Levine, the Bartlett, and the F two-sided test, F test two-sided here, these bottom three are not applicable. The top, these two are relatively outdated and the F test requires extreme adherence to normality and we're not really going to deal with that. So we can use the O'Brien or the Brown Forsyth. I prefer the Brown Forsyth. It is more robust to outliers like we have here. Up here you can see this one data point and the Brown Forsyth is more resistant to those. Jump is telling us that with a null hypothesis of equal variance and an alternative hypothesis of not equal variance, we are going to fail to reject and conclude that we have equal variances or equal enough variances to use the equal variance t-test if we wanted to. If we wanted to be conservative and simply use the unequal variance t-test, we could do that. And that is, the f-test is reported right here. Or you could then ask jump for what is just plainly called the t-test here. And you can see here Unlike in the equal variance t-test, JUMP tells you you are assuming unequal variances. You get slightly different um, t results and standard error results as you would if you ran this with the equal variance t-test. Here it is telling us again that we have a small t-ratio. We have an identical p-value here to the Welsh ANOVA. So you can see here that this 0 0.8990 is equal to the 0 0.8990 in the unequal variance t-test. So much like the ANOVA and the equal variance t-test, the F 
and the T will give you identical two-sided test results. The Welsh ANOVA and the unequal variance t-test will give you equal two-sided f-tests. What you should notice here, however, is that the degrees of freedom are not a round number, and they're equivalent here. This is the denominator degrees of freedom. Our numerator degree of freedom is one degree of freedom because we are comparing two groups. So two minus one is one. We have a one degree of freedom in the numerator and our denominator degrees of freedom are based on the sample size that we have. And in an unequal situation, you will have a decimal place associated with your denominator degrees of freedom. You can round this, but you must keep at least one decimal place. Equal variance t-tests will have round numbers for numerator and denominator degrees of freedom. Unequal tests will have non-round numbers or non-integers. We will have decimal places. And that's because it is a weighted result of degrees of freedom based on the sample size plus then the standard deviation ratios. So the math behind that's not important. Just remember that if you have an unequal variance test and you report the degrees of freedom, your degrees of freedom should have at least one decimal place. Other than that, you report it identically to the t-test. You must say that you reported an unequal t-test or you reported a Welsh ANOVA. Both of those are the same thing. Then you simply report the associated p-value with your test and then continue on with your uh, writing up of your summary and your conclusion, a substantive conclusion in the words associated with your actual variables and your actual question. Up next, we'll look at the special situation where not only do we want to not assume equal variability, we actually don't want to assume normality, where we are going to do what's called a non-parametric test to compare two groups.